having a dad which tormented me since my childhood, mainly with his obsessions about various dictators and alternative history scenarios. I myself developed similar interests, and because of that, through various thoughts I had during the nights, I eventually came up with this idea of a video. Enjoy and have fun. Welcome, normies. Today I will be talking about a hypothetical scenario about two countries we both love and hate. A scenario which for some reason seems to be obscure, not known to the general public. What will it be, you might ask? Will it be how Germany won World War II? The victory of communism in Europe? Or some weird Kaiserreich Reddit or fan fiction? Be at ease. It won't be anything as cringe like that. What I present to you is quite simple. If you are more experienced in Hearts of Iron IV, you are surely aware of the German focus called the Berlin-Moscow Axis. The idea and history behind this focus is quite complex and interesting. Now if you are above the age of 18 and don't suffer from a mental crisis by trying to reinvent yourself for the sixth time with a radical ideology, we can all agree that communism and national socialism are both at its core evil and similar ideologies. Hitler and Stalin thought so too. That is why both of them came up with the idea with the Ribbentrop-Molotov Pact, a pact which sought to divide Europe into two spheres of influence, mainly between the Soviet Union and Germany. While for the outside eye, Hitler and Stalin acted in the beginning as allies, and by that frightening England and France, both dictators in reality didn't think themselves as friends. Far from it. They both were scheming tyrannical bastards who had the blood of millions on their hands, Hitler planned from the beginning to betray Stalin in order to seize Lebensraum for Germany and the rich resources of the Soviet Union, most importantly, oil from the Caucasus. Stalin, on the other hand, sought to buy himself time. He had an army whose he previously murdered the general staff because of his paranoid nature. The Soviet army, contrary as depicted in movies and imprinted into our minds as under-equipped, was quite the opposite of that. German intelligence overconfident and misguided by Soviet failures in Finland has falsely assumed that the Soviet army had poor equipment. They couldn't have been more wrong, as the Soviets had a far bigger armor force than the Germans, and in addition to that, a far more superior one. For example, German tanks couldn't even penetrate Soviet armor in the beginning of the invasion of the Soviet Union. But all of that precious military hardware won't do you any good when it has poor leadership as we know from history. Both dictators underestimated each other in one way and another. While Hitler underestimated the strength of the Soviet army and its ability to adapt, Stalin dismissed the idea of Hitler wanting to invade him. As mentioned previously, Stalin hoped to gain himself time in order to modernize his army. By that I mean the training of new military staff, as he was building an army for a planned invasion of Western Europe. Similarly to Hitler. In order to achieve that, he wanted to appease Hitler, and even wanted to join the Axis powers. However, Hitler didn't want Stalin in the Axis powers, because as previously mentioned, Hitler had his own plans for the Soviet Union. Hitler caught Stalin with his pants down, you might say. But what if he didn't? What if Hitler actually did accept Stalin's proposal to join the Axis powers? What if Stalin had the time he needed so desperately to heal his crippled army? What if Stalin would have been the one to surprise Hitler? What if we were in a reverse situation, a situation where the Soviet Union breaks their non-aggression agreement with Germany and surprise attacks Germany and its allies. What if there would be a reverse Operation Barbarossa?
The Red Army storms forward across the European continent. There is little opposition as the European armies are taken by surprise by the overwhelming numbers of the Red Army. Ruthlessly and efficiently, the Soviets conquer one town after another. There is little hope, as nobody expected the Soviets to wield a fleet of tanks which drive across the land. Imposing iron machines which armor seems impenetrable wreak havoc across the continent. Soon the German capital of Berlin is reached. A new crisis is upon Europe. While Germany and England have been formerly at war with each other, the emergence of a new and bigger threat reconciles the two nations. In our timeline, Hitler tried to make peace with England numerous times. This, however, as we know, was declined by England, as England had the resources and means to continue a war. However, the emergence of a more threatening radical ideology and fear of a total loss of the European continent shifts England's stance. The saying goes, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. The United States of America recognizes the threat of the Soviet Union, a threat which can be detrimental to America's influence over Europe. Because of that, the United States signs the Land Lease Act, an act which in this timeline starts sending war materials to Germany. Adolf Hitler, prior to the commitment of various crimes against humanity, has been named as Man of the Year in the Times magazine and even nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. As a respected figure by the United States, talks start soon between England, the United States, and Germany. 1944 marks the date where both the United States and England formally joined the Axis powers. While France formally surrendered to Germany in 1940, there were still people like Marshal de Gaulle, which had been fighting for France against Germany. However, through diplomatic pressure from both England and the United States, de Gaulle is forced to lay down his arms as a fight without the support of the United States and England seems pointless. Marshal de Gaulle is shortly after given amnesty by the Vichy French government and joins mainland France in a joint fight against the Soviet Union. Very soon, the Soviet Union is met by a united front of Axis nations and is unable to push forward. The highly urbanized areas in Europe turn into a meat grinder of loss for the Soviet Union. Imagine Stalingrad 10 times over. In addition to that, Various partisan organizations start to be a thorn in the Soviet supply chain, most notably the Polish underground state, German remnants in East Germany, and the united efforts of various Balkan nations. The Soviet Union, while in the first year of the war maintaining a strong and overwhelming initiative, suddenly finds itself outnumbered and outgunned. A united Europe with the supply of the American industrial complex is ready to fight back the invader. Germany has to worry no longer about oil supply, as it is provided by the U.S. and England. Plans are being drawn, and slowly but surely the Soviets start to be beaten back. While it was Germany to suffer first, now the Soviet Union is on a retreat. Now it is their people, their blood. Thanks to a united effort of England and the United States, Germany is able to wield an equally large fleet of tanks as the Soviets. While in the beginning of the war the Soviet Union had a superior armor force, now the odds begin to equal out. What many people forget is the fact that much of the Soviet industrial complex was created by Western expertise. This enabled Stalin the powerful army that he wielded. However, the infrastructure of this industry had one major flaw, their power supply. The Soviet factories were often powered by only one main power hub, which left them very vulnerable to bombing attacks. One entire chain of industrial complexes could be left with no power if the electrical power plant would have been destroyed. During World War II, there have been plans devised by the Germans to bombard these power plants. There was a major flaw with the plan, though. The Germans lacked the necessary bombers with the capability to do a long-range bombing run. Remember that the Soviet Union is a very large country. However, now, with the support of the USA, which were quite famous for their B-29 Superfortress long-range bombers, the plan becomes possible. The Soviets suffer a worse fate than the Germans during the bombings of their factories. Because of the concentrated locations and bombardment of the power plants, the Soviets have difficulties to repair their power plants, leaving much of the arms industry disabled. In addition to that, the domestic situation worsens. 
It is a known fact that the Soviet Union had throughout its history a problem with the domestic food supply. Unable to produce enough food domestically, imports of food were necessary in order to keep the population fed. As part of the American land lease during our timeline, huge amounts of food were shipped to the Soviet Union. For example, U.S. military rations of canned, stewed meat were shipped to the Soviet Union. Later, this ration would be copied by the Soviets into the now famous Tushonka. Now, however, cut off from supply via the naval route, the Soviet Union finds itself in a dire situation. The Soviets are left without any help from the United States, and the Axis counterattack is encroaching into Ukraine, the Soviet Union's main agriculture sector. The Soviet situation begins to worsen as people begin to run out of food. Discontent and separatist sentiments begin to rise. As the war continues, it's becoming clear that the days of the Soviet Union are numbered. Because of that, the Axis leaders have a conference in Berlin where they discuss the after-war occupation of the Soviet Union. While until now the topic has been avoided, it is clear that Hitler has been a very unlikely ally to both England and the United States. This is being made clear by the ever-growing discontent of the United States during the conference. The United States have grown wary of Germany's crimes against humanity, but have kept quiet until now, as they needed Germany to win against the Soviet Union. However, demands are made by the United States, most notably for an independent Poland after the war. Poland, however, to keep the Germans happy, is sold out as a future puppet state to Germany, similarly to what the Soviets did to Poland in our timeline. The war ends at a tremendous cost of human lives and a total devastation of Europe, similarly to what happened in our timeline. In our timeline, the Soviet Union was known for its crimes against humanity. However, the severity of the crimes has been swept under the rug, as the Soviets were part of the Allies. In this timeline, a similar thing happens to Germany. German crimes against humanity are swept under the rug in order to save face for England and the United States. A different tyrannical regime has Europe under its yoke. In post-war Russia, social upheaval rises. A new American-sponsored democratic Russian state is formed as opposed to the German Reichskommissariat Moscovian. As the years continue, alliances are broken and distrust rises amongst the former allies. A new kind of war rises. A cold war. Yeah, yeah. So the hype is you, so